Hello everybody, it's Nerdiversal back here with another video. Um, sorry this video is a little bit late, I actually got caught up in some stuff and so I'm really glad to be finally putting this video out now. Um, so for this video I will be having an existential crisis, you know, as uh, teenagers my age do. I'm not trying to be fake woke or anything, but like, when I was drawing this picture and, uh, cause you know how there's always that thing where you like, you talk with somebody as you look at the stars and stuff and you guys just like get into deep conversations well that's what this picture kind of reminded me of because like you know fuck yeah stars so um i'm really not trying to be fake woke but like you know have an existential crisis with me and again as us teenagers do hope you guys enjoy bye how did the universe spawn from nothing and what does the concept of nothing mean? Surely something must have existed in order for the universe to be created. And after all, where did the particles that created the Big Bang come along? Our brains, or at least mine, could not possibly fathom the idea of what nothing looks like. But surely it must look like nothing. Your first instinct is black nothing. But if it's nothing, the color black doesn't even exist. So maybe it's white. But then the color of white doesn't exist either, right? It's not even anything we can experience because, after all, it's nothing. And how many hot dogs can you fit into the nothing? Or maybe you can't fit any hot dogs in the nothing because it's nothing. But then again, hot dogs don't even fit into their own buns half the time. So, you know, maybe nothing is infinite. I really hate this question. Is there life after death? Ugh, I fucking hate this question. Cause like, when you die, where do you go? Do you go anywhere? Do you go to the nothing? The nothing, that's the scariest one. The nothing. You just cease to exist. That's a frightening notion for a lot of people, which is why I think religion may have been created, but that's a whole nother road I won't even go down. A friend of mine once said to me that the human brain actually can't even comprehend the idea of death, and often resorts to doing other things in place of thinking about death, like overspending on items that they feel bring them validation. Man, I really hate this one. Let's move on. Is anyone actually right or wrong? What defines right and wrong for people? We consider cold-blooded murderers bad people, and rightfully so, but what led us to consider certain things bad and other things good? Most importantly, who decided fuck was a bad word because I have a bone to pick with them? Or really any word. And is anything actually right or wrong? Or is everything we think about bad people and good people completely objective, fabricated by the society we live in, just like how fashion trends and things we find acceptable are fabricated by our own society? Or how we supposedly can't eat pasta every day of our lives because we'll die from malnutrition? We could never call these things fact. So where did these ideas of right and wrong stem from? And how did they come about? And will they ever change? Is there any actual reward to doing anything? Everyone is always constantly preparing for something, constantly working towards something, but when is enough ever enough? For example, when I make a new video and I upload it, the workload just begins again as that video will soon be lost to my video history, and a new one will need to be uploaded again. And just like everyone else, we're constantly stuck in a circle of produce, complete, produce, complete, produce, complete. Is there any point in anyone's life where they've created enough? or even one grand project that means they'll never have to do anything again, and that people will remain interested in what they've made. After all, it feels like we're stuck in a cycle because we go to school to prepare for college, we go to college to prepare for work, we go to work to prepare for retirement, and we go to retirement to prepare for death. And after death, what's there left to prepare for, and what's the reward? And for that matter, why do they keep making technology to improve our lives rather than fix problems we already have? Do people who create new technology feel the same way we do about constantly producing content in our own lives? And for that matter, who created the need to constantly have something new and fresh? I for one would be totally content with the phone I have now, with everything it can do, but there's always a need for something new and something greater whether it's needed or not. I guess there's some questions that will just never be answered. We'll be left forever wondering and forever panicking when we think about them. Fascinating! Thank <laughs> you.